All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless me here talking about real music in real time for real people just like you right there and just like me here. Um, the Little River Band, uh, the story of how Dave had it wrong. That would be me. Um, first, I want to say a couple of things about the current lineup of the, the LRB, um, the band that tours the United States mostly. Uh, I don't think they're planning on going to Australia anytime soon. Uh, they're a good bunch of people. Their management, everybody who is involved with getting those guys gigs and um, just everybody involved with you know the road crew, everybody who works for that operation. This video I'm about to do is nothing against you guys. Um, the situation that you have is because of things that transpired over the years. Um, this has been this way now since I think 1998. If I go back and watch the interview, um, nothing against Wayne Nelson. Um, he is a good guy. Uh, I know he lost a child uh, a long time ago and um, that story is heartbreaking and I don't wish that upon anybody. So I have no personal issue with Wayne Nelson. I have no personal issue with the management and the people that um, run the operation. Okay, I've seen the band. They paid my way to see the band. Um, they even sent me their box set of uh, CDs and so forth. So I have nothing against those people. But um, when new information comes to light, I think it is appropriate to share it. Um, the people from Australia were not happy with me for a very long time. Uh, and I caused my own discomfort by not exploring uh, the things that they were saying in more detail, just dismissing them, making fun of names and so forth was not a good idea, was not a mature thing to do. Um, I have done a couple of videos basically repenting of my ways there and acknowledging that when new information is presented, and if you're kind of a journalist, meaning, and I'm not a professional journalist, but I've been told what a journalist does is sees or hears something and then either writes it down or publishes it or allows it to be heard. Uh, and that's, that's what journalism is. It's not anything that sophisticated that you have to have a degree um, you can be an observer like me and put forth information and then people can decide for themselves what to think. Now, there's no question that Graham Goebel is probably one of the most talented musicians I've ever interviewed. Um, I'll be honest, it was a daunting task. He was a gentleman, a really uh, easy to talk to person, but somebody who I think is... Um, very uh, detail oriented and very particular about just a number of different things. And I think that shows up in the music that this band made. And let's be completely honest, when the band debuted in 1975, they put out an album that was very sophisticated, very high level, very uh, just amazing quality as far as a production value um, the melodies, the intricate playing, um, the songwriting, right, right off the bat, that songwriting is a home run and continues to be a home run pretty much for the band's entire existence. It's just that record labels do things and you'll have to watch the video. Both parts are now uh, available to see on the channel. So please watch those videos because Graham does most of the talking, thankfully, and I sit back and listen and just uh, take it all in and try to digest, you know, what happened at the beginning, what led to the band losing the trademark, which happens later on. It's very complicated. I had boiled it down to, well, these guys, they weren't paying attention and they should have. Um, but musicians, typically the creative ones are busy, you know, uh, making the donuts. You know what I'm saying? I mean, for Americans, we kind of know what that means. But you get up, you make the donuts in the morning, you do your job, and then you turn around and somebody has changed the sign out front and it doesn't say, uh, doesn't have your name on it anymore. And that's kind of what happened to these guys. Now, 
I'm not saying, you know, it's a hundred percent, not their fault. I'm saying it's probably about 95%, not their fault. And I think in hindsight, I again need to acknowledge that uh, I was wrong with some of the things that I had said in the past, making fun of um, someone's name in the group by the name of Beeb. It was funny, um, but it's it's not funny um, when you think think everything through, and then you find out that was a nickname that he was given when he was younger and so forth. And it's just it's just stupid crap. And I wish I didn't say it, but it was entertaining at the time, and it certainly made the people who are currently you know, using the band's name and touring and so forth, made them feel like I was on their side. And I was, I was on their side. I'm thinking, well, these guys blew it. You guys have the name, have fun with it. Now, you know, I've seen the current lineup. I like the current lineup. I think they do a good job. Um, but as one person on Patreon just said to me, Dave, those other guys, that's the band, you know, the original guys, those are the band. Those guys are the band. And, and I agree. It's, it's hard to ignore. If you go back and explore those earlier albums, and the reason I say people do this is because here in the States, they were kind of a singles band. You know, when they put out a single, that was it. You know, FM radio maybe thought they were a little too adult contemporary, a little too sophisticated. But quite honestly, some of their best music is the stuff that didn't get on the radio. Um, but the stuff that did get on the radio, again, still accumulating uh, lots and lots of airplay each year. Um, five million total plays on one record and over a million on another. Uh, and for some reason, the focus testing hasn't uh, stopped LRB from being on the radio. In fact, in recent years, I think it, it just seems like once they get rid of a bunch of other songs, you tend to hear the same songs over and over again. I, I tend to hear Lady and Reminiscing and Help Is On Its Way. I, I tend to hear those songs a lot. You know, Lonesome Loser, Cool Change. Those are just amazing songs. And those were written either by Graham or maybe a Glenn Sharrick or a combination of people in the group who had great ideas and great instincts and created great music. Um, you really can't come along and say, well, these guys, because they blew it, their history should be erased. They, because even if you take that stance and say that, okay, they lost the name, how silly of them or how um, inept of them to have lost their, their original trademark. And now um, another group of people pretty much tours with that designation and, you know, because of that, you just kind of obscure. That, that is not a good idea. And I think some of that has happened for sure. And if you listen to the interview, I think you'll feel, if not sorry for, you'll at least understand the pain that maybe these guys who did all this great work, great music, very creative people, and then they're really not being recognized. And then you know, if your images or your music, the original music is being used in the advertising, the promotions and so forth, that's got to be another hit to the gut because you can't do that yourself. You can't go out there and promote yourself that way. And I understand, believe me, the legal stuff involved in this is over the top. It is really difficult to, to digest and sift through, but I think that's the whole point. People are like, ah, screw that. I'm just going to go see the current lineup. And by the way, if you're a casual fan and you want to plunk down a certain amount of money, especially since you know the world has been locked down for a year, and I know this band is out there on the road, they've got to feed their families and so forth. I get that. And I would say, do what you think is right, just like everything else. I mean, Boycotting it is is kind of dumb. I mean, if you want to at least get a fairly decent representation, I don't know if you can go see a little river band tribute band. I don't think that exists. Maybe there is a band out there doing that. I, I have not heard of it. Uh, or going to, you know, your local bar and hoping that the band will do, you know, reminiscing or something. I, it, 
it's just not going to be the same thing. These guys do a fairly decent representation of the music. But again, if you go back and, and listen to the original players, uh, whether it through just watching videos on YouTube or uh, if you pick up a live CD like I did, you're going to hear a, a, a pretty large difference. Um, there's this authentic quality that, again, you can't just quantify. In some bands, you can replace people and you can replace even the entire band and get a vibe that there's still kind of a presence there from the original days. Um, sometimes when you replace membership, it's far more generic and it's far more cover band-ish. And, and I think this current lineup is somewhere in between that. Because they have Wayne Nelson, who was there in 1980, that does lend some credibility to it. And Wayne did sing some lead vocals. But he didn't sing, he didn't sing lead vocals on every track that they perform. Um, and I think a lot of folks who are going to listen to this music, and look, right now, I get it. You want to escape. You want to get out of the house. I would say go buy your tickets. Go and enjoy yourself and just take it for what it is. But for those of you who are kind of concerned that the original guys aren't getting the recognition that they deserve, and I think there's a lot of truth to that, and I think you should at least explore that and understand that this music came from somewhere. And if you go back through the archives, you're going to just hear some of the best. I mean, I put these guys up there with the Eagles, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, the Doobie Brothers, um, Harmonies on the level of ABBA. And, and, and ABBA had some pretty good harmonies. Same with the Beach Boys, same with the Eagles and Crosby, Stills, Nash. All right. Maybe not with Neil Young, but um, certainly without Neil. So anyway, um, just to wrap this up, I want to thank Graham Goebel for uh, seeing past my past and understanding that I had uh, in my heart really changed my mind about this. And this is the difference between, um, and I'm not putting myself on a pedestal or anything, but you can change your mind and you can't tell the truth about something. And it's a part of growing and learning in life, not just in this uh, particular situation, but in anything to just come to terms with something that, oh, well, there's new information that I didn't have, or there's another side to this story. And I think as somebody who's doing a little bit of investigative journalism, but not that much, but some, in this particular case, I think it warranted that I sit down and listen to what this man had to say. Again, he was gracious enough to give me this interview. Um, he's not been a gentleman through the entire process. Um, we did some editing on the videos and we wanted to make sure that the videos went out uh, with you know, a level of professionalism or at least where people could understand um, what he was saying. And maybe I was a little long-winded at times, much like I am now. But uh, if I had to do the interview over again, I would ask shorter more direct questions and then let Graham do most of the talking. Cause I think that makes for a better interview when you're listening and not trying to interject and not trying to make yourself the interview. I think the interview comes out way better. So <clears throat> again, thanks to Graham Goble. I would uh, urge everybody to check out uh, those two uh, parts to this one interview. Uh, in the second part, uh, he goes into a lot of detail about all of the legal stuff that was going on. And it might be hard to follow, but it just shows you that this wasn't just a slam dunk that these guys, well, they just walked out the door and that was the end of it. Um, just check it out. And um, you know, you can always uh, find me on Patreon to tell me what you think about the situation. And uh, again, thanks for watching the channel. Please keep subscribing to the channel. Um, it appears that I have weathered a bit of a storm and I will continue to just hope for the best. But uh, in this business right now where everything is political or if you say something that goes against the narrative, all of a sudden you're a target. So 
I'm going to try to be more diplomatic, but it doesn't mean I'm going to stop being who I am. In any event, thanks again, and I'll see you soon.